Hello everyone, this is um, a game between Magnus Carlsen and uh, FIDE Master uh, Battle Gun from the first round of the uh, World Cup. Carlsen had the white pieces and Battle Gun the black pieces. The game started off with E4. Battle Gun played D6, which is uh, pretty flexible, but in this case leads to his pig's defense. D4, classical setup by Magnus, G6, and so we could call it a modern since the knight is not out yet. Bishop C4, again one of many uh, flexible ways to uh, meet modern systems. <clears throat> That's one of the uh, downsides to playing uh, modern uh, systems in chess is that there are so many uh, white responses to uh you know to to your system that it's hard to really um be prepared for everything knight f6 just attacking the e pawn there queen e2 again magnus here is playing uh coy and flexible uh that's one thing i find too about playing against modern systems is that uh black benefits if you um kind of re, uh, play, you reveal your hand too soon if you play too uh, rigidly and straightforward say if Magnus just played knight f3 then black probably would have played bishop g4 and you know pinning the knight and his play would have just been more straightforward not saying that white doesn't get a slight advantage but uh, I like the uh, more flexible approach it's kind of Magnus is not revealing really what he's going to do is he going to wind up castling queenside um uh, you know what is he gonna do with the with his knights? Is he gonna put a pawn on c3? Is he gonna put the knight on c3? He's just keeping his options uh, open. <clears throat> knight c6, attacking the other pawn. So now uh, Magnus has to uh, answer the question as to what to do. Of course, if he puts his knight on f3, then it's possible that the bishop can come and pin here on a g4 so there's knight f3 bishop g7 castles and there it is the pin on g4 so the uh, case has been reopened what are we going to do about this pawn magnus simply plays c3 and now you can see why he uh, delayed the development of his uh, knight on b1 so that he can use the c pawn to fortify uh, the center. Castle. And what's interesting about this setup is that uh, just by that single pawn move c3, the bishop on g4 and the knight on c6 uh, kind of find themselves uh, somewhat um, less than optimi optimally placed. Because the pressure is not there on d4 to really uh, force uh, white to do anything important. Um, of course, black has an option of playing on e4. But then um, Magnus always has the option to just simply uh, play d5 instead. So in many instances, white will... Uh, wind up winning the bishop pair for pretty much nothing and uh, I think in the long term uh, that's good for white h3 bishop takes f3 queen takes f3 so simple simple positional advantage more space as white occupies the first four ranks and the bishop pair not saying black is losing at all don't get me wrong, but just a slight advantage and a nagging advantage. Um, white is only playing for one result here, and that's the problem with uh, many of these type of systems. It's not that uh, they're bad per se. It's that you wind up defending difficult positions for a long time, and you don't have any counterplay. So Magnus can just sit back and relax knowing that, okay, he has good chances of winning, and if black is really, really lucky, he may draw. 
Meanwhile, black has no real uh, chances in this type of position. Let's keep going. E5. Oh, so there it is. Thematic events. Rook D1. <clears throat> Good move. <clears throat> Maintaining the tension in the center. He's giving black the choice to capture on um, D4 and give up his portion in the center. Rook D1 keeps the idea in mind that maybe at some point when it's appropriate, D takes E5 can be played and then the queen finds itself on a bad square. Queen E8 <clears throat> moving and now there's the threat of E takes D4 with a double attack on the E pawn. Magnus simply advances D5 again. Now Black's pieces find themselves somewhat awkwardly placed. Okay. And now we see the position clarifying itself somewhat. And White is going to uh, play on the Queen side. Um, and Black is going to try to set up his pieces uh, to play for a king side attack and try to get an f4 uh, in, um, in the style of a king's Indian uh, defense here. Queen e2. Knight h5. Bishop b5. Queen c8, as I said, just preparing for the attack on the uh, on the king side. Knight a3. A6. Bishop a4. Uh, Magnus is careful not to block block his pawns here as these are these are the pawns that are going to help him break open the position on the queen side. F5. So white uh, needs to watch out for black's potential uh, king side play. Magnus plays bishop c2. Inviting the capture and this is often a major decision for black in these type of structures Does he play f takes e4? Thus opening up the f file Excuse me. Thus opening up the f file for his pieces <clears throat> But at the same time uh, Giving white access to the e4 square or does he play as in the game the move f5 Shutting down the F file, but then at the same time planning on um, pawn storming on the king side. Here he decides on F4. Magnus offers a, a, a queen trade here. Black takes it. And H takes G4. And already I like white's position. Because now the the attack is diminished on the king side for black after the, after the trade, and uh, so its potential for attack is um, is lowered substantially. And what also happens is the pieces wind up becoming misplaced. You know, if you build up, you know, uh, you set up the position for an attack, and then you don't attack, then you just have a bunch of uh, you know, pieces just hanging out. G5. Knight D7. Knight C4. Idea coming to A5. Attacking this pawn. And basically just to provoke weakness on the black um, queen side. And now with the pawn structure as it is on the king side. Where exactly is black's counterplay coming from? 
So B6. So now we see a little weakness there. B4. This keeps the black knight from jumping into C5. H6. G takes H6. Bishop takes H6. And G4, good move. Exploiting the fact that black cannot capture en passant due to the uh, relationship between the bishop on c1 and the bishop on h6. This allows white to keep the position closed. Beneficial to white. Knight f6. This is a uh, dubious move because again, you can't, you're, you're making like a one move attack here. You really can't do anything. I mean, Magnus just shuts, shuts the door with f3. So now why is the knight here? Okay, so all of these pieces are just uh, are bad right now. And again, uh, black is not lost immediately, but strategically, which in, uh, in this instance, meaning long-term prospects, black is lost because he has no way to generate the needed counter uh, play, and then he has no way to stop white's breaks on the uh, queen side. There's nothing black can do to stop white from breaking open the position when... He wants to because say for instance black was able to you know play the move b5 well eventually either the move a4 when properly prepared by white or the move c4 is going to break open the position if he keeps the position the pawn structure black i'm talking about as it is eventually this knight will this knight on c4 will be removed and you will see the event c4 b5 again after proper preparation perhaps putting a rook on a c file moving this bishop to f2 um perhaps moving this knight to b3 you know say after a legal legal route like d2 and just after preparation because white has all the time in the world to execute uh this break Bishop g5, just trying to get the bishop to some daylight. King comes up, g2. This this is, you know, he's preparing, just clearing the, the ranks because he already sees that the only idea, the only fertile idea that black has is to try to, you know, put the rooks on the h-file and cause trouble in that way. So anybody can see that plan from a mile away. King g7, there's a4, bishop h4, and now bishop d2. Now we see the rooks are connected. g5, again, the rhyme and reason is, you know, suspect. This bishop's not going anywhere now. Um, so, he, I mean, it's kind of like he abandoned... Uh, all hope in the position. The only, again, the only idea for black is to put the bishop here and then try to get these rooks over here and somehow invade the, uh, the, uh, H file. But, of course, white has to be sleep for this to, uh, materialize. Rook H1, of course. Knight G6. Again, this idea, bishop here. Maybe even put in the knight here at some point. King f1. King is just going to safer um, safer and greener pastures. Rook h8. Reconnecting the rooks by getting off the uh, back rank. And again, Magnus uh, has brought his king to safety. Now, his a5. And what is A5 doing? It's giving Black uh, some messed up choices. Of course, if he takes, that will be bad. Okay, at the night, you know, night takes or whatever, because then you had the isolated pawns. You know, these bad pawns. And if he pushes, as in the game, again, the break on C4 is ready. 
And that's what I was saying. No matter what Black did, there's no way he could stop these breaks. He tries to keep the position closed. And now the Knight is right in place to help support this break right here. C4. Again, later on, maybe put a Rook or something there. And then once this is um, broken open, then you have the attack on this pawn. And notice how this Bishop is placed to protect the B uh, pawn. Sorry for the graphics. Knight e7. There it is. C4. It's just a desperate move. D takes c6. Knight takes c6. Now I did, of course, he wanted to hop that knight in there if if Magnus was just um, impulsive and just recaptured captured automatically, then the knight would just Hop in here, harassing. But of course, it takes the time to guard d4, stop the uh, counterplay. Meanwhile, this pawn is still threatened. Change of rooks only helps white, as now white uh, is on the h file, and if white if excuse me, if Black contests the H file, and um, Magnus would gladly just trade off the rooks. B takes. Knight takes C4, and now you see the attack here, Tempe, and now you have this two to one majority on the queen side for uh, for White. All right, and you had the bishop here to boot. So this game is. Uh, is lost for black in a matter of time. It's too uh, too too ma too many um, advantages in the position uh, for white. Rook b8. Right. So he leaves this uh, pawn and wants to counterattack here. This just seemed like a flawed idea because knight takes d6. Yes, knight takes d6 is just. Uh, because this this is not realistic to play um, knight takes b4 here because of the check. They say at the king f7, bishop b3, and now the king is in trouble. Where where exactly do we go with the king? Because you got to remember this rook has been given. Uh, domination of the age file so he can't just slide back to the back rank because this rook on b8 would get grabbed this forces a move like that and again it's just an example <clears throat> right into the pin and of course this rook would be threatening and then you would just simply scoot the uh, bishop up one meanwhile maintaining that so this is why this king g6 is played and not this move knight uh, takes b4. That's out of the question. The knight goes into f5. Now we're entertaining thoughts of bringing our rook here. You know, bishop here. <clears throat> you know, and a mating net is uh, being formed. So, at the night at five, <clears throat> uh, Fide Master uh, Balagun had enough and uh, resigned because there really is no uh, defense to the uh, Rook's penetration. At the Bishop H4, say blocking, blocked the Rook right here. White can afford to just continue attacking. For instance, Bishop D3. Again, if Knight takes uh, B4 here, White has a nice resource in pinning this Knight. So there's just too many uh, tactical, um, uh, you know, um, methods for White to overrun Black's position. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed that uh, brief analysis. And again. 
good effort uh, by the black pl player, uh, Fide Master Balogun. Uh, rated 22-55. Uh, you know, put a good effort against um, the world champion. And so it's a game that he definitely could be proud of having the opportunity to play him. So I'm going to look at some more games. And I'll see you on the next video.